Okay, so last one of these types of problems. Now we've got a table, but we're not just going to have one side to this table. It's going to be uh, two sides, like most tables. And we're going to have a mass sitting on top. And we're going to have a pulley on this side connected to a hanging mass. And then, of course, to make it just that much more complicated, we're going to have another rope uh, connected to a mass sitting on this side. Now, we're going to call this, <coughs> let's say, um, mass 1, 2, and 3. And of course, now you realize there's two separate ropes. So let's call this one uh, T1, tension 1, and this one's tension 2. Let's give, give write down what we're given. Uh, coefficient of friction is going to be uh, 0.32. And M1 is going to equal 2 kilograms. M2 is going to equal 4 kilograms and M3 is going to equal 5 kilograms. And what we're supposed to do here is we're supposed to find T1 and T2. Now, which way is this thing going to slide? Well, let's change colors here and let's say, all right, look, this guy, number 3, is big. So this is 5, and this is number 1 is only 2. Therefore, I'm sure most people would agree that through life experience, you're going to know that the whole thing is going to slide that way. Let's write down our force vectors. This is going to be M1G. That's going to be T1. That's going to be T1. That's going to be T2. That's going to be uh, T2. And that's going to be M3G. And that's it. And now we can find acceleration first, right? That's how we always solve these problems. So let's say summation of the forces for the system is F net for the system and remember okay so T1 T1 internal force right for the system T2 T2 internal force they all cancel out right and of course the other one which I didn't really draw because I'm being a little lazy is uh, M2G and Fn those two guys don't contribute to the acceleration in the direction of the path. So we can ignore those guys as well. And so we've got, starting here, negative M1G. Oh, wait a sec. Ah, I forgot something. Friction! I forgot friction. So let's change colors again. Now, which way is friction going to go on number two? Is it going to go to the right or the left? Well, remember, friction is always acts in opposition to the direction of motion. So if number two is going to move to the right, friction is going to be to the left. Okay, yay. Can't do this without friction. So, therefore, we've got negative force of friction. And then we've got plus m3g okay and that's going to equal f net of the system which is mass of the system times acceleration let us now rewrite this as now which mass is this number two the one that's sitting on the table see okay so And now the total mass uh, 
And now we can easily find the acceleration. Let's do a little bit of factoring here. Let's take g out. And m1 minus mu m2. OK? And divided by the whole thing, m1, m2, m3. Let's put our numbers in. You notice I can interchange newtons per kilogram and meters per second squared. OK? I do this on purpose. Y they're both the same units. They're not different, OK? Um, Mass number three was five minus mass number one, which was two minus point three two times mass number two, which was four all over M one two plus four plus 5 kilograms. Okay, let's see what we get for our answer there. Uh, 0.32, enter 4 times, change sign, uh, 2 minus 5 plus, 9.8 times 11 divided by uh, all that adds up to 11. And our answer for the acceleration I get is 1.53 meters per second squared. Okay, and now at this point, once again, we have a choice to make. Which free body do we want to analyze? If we picked this one at this point, we'd be making a mistake because, once again, we don't know T1 and T2. And so if we use this number two free body diagram, we'd get one equation and two unknowns. Instead, let's do that and that, one and three. Okay? And so let's draw it out. Here's 1, T1, M1, G. Which way is positive? This way is positive. Summation of the forces. So we've got T1 minus M1, G is equal to M1, A. And so therefore T1 is going to equal M1, A Oops, you know what? That's not the way I write A. I don't know why I just did that. The way that I draw A is with the lowercase for acceleration. Okay? And uh, there we go. Factor out the M1. And we're going to get M1 was 2 and acceleration we got was 1.53 plus 9.8 and our answer is going to be 22. I'm getting 22.7 okay so T1 is 22.7 newtons. OK, there's half the problem. Now, one thing you got to be careful of here is, remember in the previous uh, example of these type of problems, I actually said, all right, well, we don't, don't necessarily have to do the free body diagram again. Uh, we can just take the equation. Be careful. You can't do that this time. Why not? Well, because Number three, you're going to have tension this way, and you're going to have M3 
3g this way, but which way is positive? Now down is positive, you see? Why is that? You see, over here, up was positive, but here down is positive. Well, the reason for that was because when we originally wrote our free body diagram for the system, notice our path. On this side, it's going up, and on this side, we're going down. So that means, guess what? Our free body uh, diagram is going to create a slightly different equation. Watch. You know, before, what did it create? We had this here, right? Okay, let's see what happens now. Now it's going to be negative T2 plus M3G is going to equal M3A. Okay, because this is in the negative direction. So now we're going to have T2 is going to equal M3G minus M3A. Factoring out the M3. Notice, notice the difference. This and this are not the same. Okay? That's a consequence of our positive direction. So, uh, let's work it out. M3 was 5. And... 9.8 minus uh, acceleration of 1.53. I think it was 1.53. Yes, it was. 1.53 meters per second squared. And what do we get for the answer for T2? Let's try that out. 9.8 enter, 1.53 minus 5 times. Answer, 41.35. You can round that a bit if you like. But that's the end of the problem. I hope you enjoyed it. See you later.